Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mullen. Today I'm doing a podcast talking about a special type of circular motion and this is involving objects that are leaning on an angle or tilted when they go around a circle. We instinctively do this whenever we ride a bicycle or a motorcycle into a curve. We lean in towards the center. Uh, planes also do this when they're making a turn and we're going to look at the physics behind what's going on here. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want you to think about a motorcycle leaning as it comes around a, a turn. Zoom. So what's happening as this is uh, going around the turn? I want to first off look at a car going around a turn and talk about something special that's going on. So when I look at a car going around a turn, uh, we've seen this example before. I have the normal force and the force of gravity. And then there's that force of friction, which in this case is the centripetal force pushing or pulling it towards the center of the circle. What's interesting to note that is that both the normal force and the force of friction are actually supplied by the same object, and that's the road. So if we think about the fact that the road is pushing both up and over, it's reasonable to assume that if you were the road, you're actually pushing on the car at somewhat of an angle. Okay, Force of push on the car by the road. So when we look at the, what, which direction the, the road is actually pushing the car, um, it turns out that the car's center of gravity, right, its center of mass, is going to have to be at that point in space. Uh, if the car's center of gravity is not at that point in space, uh, then what happens is the object will not make the turn and the car will roll over. So this force is related to the object's center of mass uh, and this is going to also apply to a motorcycle on a turn. So when we're on a motorcycle on a turn, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens uh, force diagram wise. So as we're leaning to some angle, and we're going to call this angle theta, that we lean from our vertical axes, as we take this angle there, and we're moving in a circle, there is some centripetal force pushing towards the center of the circle. So if you're the road, and you feel this motorcycle on you, the road feels pushed from the motorcycle in a, a, a down into the left direction. So because the road is being pushed down to the left in response, Newton's law says that the, the road pushes back up and to the right, equal and opposite forces. Okay. So when I look at the force diagram for my rider, he feels a push up and to the right force of push and from the the rider's center of gravity wherever that is he feels the force of gravity force of gravity and then this is the force of push on the rider from the ground now we have to remember that that force of push on the rider from the ground is just like our last example where we really have two things going on at once there's a normal force from the atom scrunching and there's an anti-sliding force from the atoms not grinding. So we have our force of friction and our force of normal doing the same thing. Uh, so the, the, the ground is actually doing two types of forces at once, even though the rider really only feels that pushback from the road. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what is this angle of lean theta. And so the problem gives me a mass of my rider, 60 kilograms, uh, moving at a velocity of 12 meters per second and the radius is going to be 30 meters. So we're given some variables and when I look at this diagram here, if the rider is moving in a circular path such as this, uh, there's always going to be a force pointing towards the center. So I look at my force diagram and I notice that vertically he's not accelerating. So my normal force and my force of gravity end up being balanced. That means that the force of friction is once again my centripetal force is the only force towards the center. So we're looking for our centripetal force. We're going to need that first before we can find this angle. So I look at my equation list and I notice that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the velocity squared over r. Well the problem gives us all of those variables. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 60 kilograms. My velocity was 12 meters per second. We're going to square that. And then we divide by the radius of this circle, which was 30 meters. 
When I enter all this in my calculator, I'm going to get that the centripetal force is 288 newtons. Uh, and because the force of friction is the centripetal force, I can go back and say that 288 newtons is a centripetal force. It's no longer a question mark. So what I can do now is since I have this force, um, I'm going to need to 288 newtons. We're going to use some trig and what we know about this triangle to solve for this angle. So I have this side here. This is a parallelogram. That means this is also 288. So we need this other angle here, the normal force. So to find the normal force, because it's balanced with the force of gravity, I'm going to take the mass times the uh, gravitational field strength, which is just my 60 kilograms times my 10 newtons per kilogram. And we get the uh, force of gravity on my rider is 600 newtons. So what I can do now that I know that this is 600 is I can use a function that deals with the opposite initiation size of this triangle. And that function is tangent. So when I take the arc tangent of opposite over adjacent, which was um, our force of friction over our normal force, okay, which is just equal to my 288 newtons over my 600 newtons. We're going to get an angle of 25.6 degrees measured from the vertical is equal to our theta. So now we can actually figure out what angle the rider has to lean in order to successfully complete this turn. If he doesn't lean enough and his center of gravity uh, is not at the right point in space, then he will not make the turn. All right, this was how to do a problem at a lean, and I hope that this was helpful.